Uh, good morning, kids. It's Mr. Coyne with District 65, where I work as a school social worker for uh, Washington and Lincoln Elementary Schools. And today is Tuesday, April 7, and we have a return reader today, Miss Angela. Thank you for coming today. This is Doggy Lou story time, and he's all set. And as usual, we'll just light our candle to set the scene. But we're being very careful and we always blow out the candle before we leave the room and we always make sure mom or dad or somebody that is an adult is watching us because we never play with fire there we go now today i thought was a special day because at 10 o'clock on tuesday this morning did you hear yes. a loud siren? Yeah. I think the whole city of Evanston practices every Tuesday during this season the um, weather warning signal. So for kids who don't know, that signal is very loud. And it's supposed to warn everybody if there is a real tornado risk. I think they call that a tornado warning. Right, that's the warning. And then we're supposed to go in our basements if we have that or seek some kind of shelter, perhaps the bathroom if you don't have a basement. But maybe this is a good opportunity for all the families in Evanston just to talk about their safety plan if it does go off and there's a tornado warning. Yeah, and what you should do. All right, all right let's get focused, kids. Time for our story. So body still, eyes focused, ears listening, and voices quiet. Thanks, Miss Angela. Happy to do it. I have a book here today that I really like because it's about cats and mice. It's called Mabella the Clever. It's by Margaret Reed McDonald and it's illustrated. The illustrations are really beautiful by Tim Coffey. And it is based on a limba tale from Africa. In the early times, some were clever and some were foolish. The cat was one of the clever ones. The mice were mostly foolish. I need to look at the beautiful colors. But one little mouse was not so foolish and her name was Maybella and her father had taught her her cleverness. Her father always told her, Maybella, when you are out and about, keep your eyes open and you should, I'm sorry, keep your ears open and listen. Maybella, when you are out and about, keep your eyes open and look around you. And Mabella, when you are speaking, pay attention to what you are saying. <laughs> Lastly, Mabella, if you need to move, move fast. So her father must have been quite wise too. And one day a cat came to the mouse village. He was a very beautiful cat. Look at his gorgeous eyes. Dear mice, I come to offer you a special invitation. It has been decided that the mice may join the secret cat society. The mice were very, very excited. They'd never been invited to anything like this. <gasps> we are going to get to join the cat club, they said. Oh, and mice, my dears, said the cat. When you have been initiated into the cat society, you will know all of the secrets of cats. Come to my house on Monday morning and we will hold a secret ceremony. Everyone came out of their house to hear all about this and they got very, very excited and they couldn't wait for Monday to come. So on Monday morning, bright and early, the little mice were all there. Oh my! all arrived, said the cat. Oh, how delicious. I mean, delightful. 
You must all learn the Secret Cat Society song. The song goes like this. When we are marching, we never look back. The cat is at the end. Fofeng, Fofeng. And the mice learn to shout really loudly on that last Fofeng. And so the cat lined them all up in a straight line and there at the end came, of course, the cat. And Maybella got to march in the front because she was the smallest mouse of all. And so there she is. And now we will march into the forest. The cat said, and you will learn the secrets of the cat. Remember, you must never, ever look back. And so they were off. Mabella was leading the way. She was so proud. When we are marching, marching, we never look back. The cat is at the end. Fofeng, Fofeng. And everybody is singing the, this lovely marching song. When we are marching, marching, we never look back. The cat is at the end. Fofeng, Fofeng. And every time the mouse sh mice shouted Fo Feng, the cat Fo Feng, another mouse. See his little backpack? Where he's putting all the mice? Now, suddenly, Mabella remembered the things her father had taught her. Mabella, when you are out and about, keep your ears open and listen. And Mabella stopped singing for a moment and she listened. She did not hear a long line of mice behind her. She heard a few mice and the cat's voice was getting closer each time they sang Fo Feng. Then Maybella remembered something else her father had told her. Maybella, when you are out and about, keep your eyes open and look around you. So Maybella turned her head this way and that way, a little to the left and a little to the right. And she did not see a long line of mice behind her. She saw a very short line of mice and a cat. And the cat was very close. Then she remembered that her father had said, Mabella, when you are speaking, pay attention to what you are saying. So she listened to her song. Hmm. When we are marching, marching, we never look back. And the cat is at the end. Mabella stopped. The cat is at the end? What does that mean? It means no one is watching the cat. Mabella turned right around. There was the cat. The cat had just faux fanged the mouse right behind Mabella. What is the last thing her father had told her? Mabella, if you need to move, move fast. And she did. She dove into the bushes so fast, so fast. Look at her diving into the bushes and the brambles. The cat pounced on nothing but thorns. Look, there's the cat. There's Mabella. She told this story to her children. Oh, wait, wait, I missed a page. The cat was stuck, the mice got out, and Mabella lived to tell the tale. Very important. You must live to tell the story. She told this to her children, and she told it to her children's children. And now Limba parents are still telling this story to their children. It is good for you to remember all of the things that Mabella's father taught her. When you are out and about, keep your ears open and listen. When you are out and about, keep your eyes open and look around you. When you are speaking, pay attention to what you are saying. And if you have to move, move fast.
Limba grandparents say, if a person is clever, it is because someone has taught them their cleverness. So I love this book. I'm going to read you a story by one of my favorite authors. She's from Michigan, and her name is Patricia Polacco. And she brought this story back with her from Russia. It is called Babushka Baba Yaga. And you might be able to relate to the little girl in the story uh, because she, she was bored. And you might be getting a little bored at home. She was the last of her kind, a creature of legends, a being of the forest, and she ruled her woods alone. She ate alone and slept alone. Her loneliness made more bitter by the stories that were told of her, stories of the horrible, terrible Baba Yaga. And so she watched sadly from afar as the people of the nearby village celebrated the seasons of their lives together. They kept holidays together and rejoiced at weddings. We have some holidays coming up this week. It's a big, big holiday week. Maybe your family is celebrating some holidays. And most of all, all of these people in the village were pleased at the birth of their young. Oh, how Baba Yaga wanted to hold just a little one, if only for a moment. Oh, how she wanted a little one of her own. But she was too old now and knew that would never happen. Now, many mornings, the babushkas, those are the, what they call the grandmothers in Russia, the babushkas bustled by her forest with their grandchildren. Oh, I wish I had a grandchild, she said. Then one day, as she came close to the dacha, that's the little house. This is a dacha over here. Of one of the babushkas, she saw some of her clothes drying on the clothesline. Oh, I'll borrow these, and then I'll just be a babushka, and I won't be Baba Yaga. So she looked at the reflection of herself in the stream. Oh, I shall have to scrub the forest off of my skin and cut my nails and comb my hair and hurt. But my ears, oh, she said, what am I going to, did you see her ears? She has long ears. What am I gonna do about my ears? Well, then she remembered, but Bushkas always wear scarves. She carefully dressed herself. Oh yes, she said with glee, I look just like a babushka. And she said goodbye to all the little forest fairies and creatures of the forest. I'm going into the village, she said. As she entered the village, she was warmly greeted by the other babushkas sitting under the shade of the tree in the center of the square. Oh, come, 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 sister, come sit with us. Baba Yaga smiled. No one recognized her at all, and they showed her a brand new baby that had been born just that morning. This is my grandchild, my brand new grandchild, said one proud babushka. And this is my Masha, isn't she dear? One after another, the babushkas shared their babies with her. And just then, Natasha and her little son, Victor, passed. One of the babushkas whispered, too bad. That little one hasn't got a babushka to care for him while his mother works. As they went on admiring the other babies, well, Baba Yaga just got up and started following Natasha and Victor. She followed them down the road and into their little house. Old one, Natasha greeted her cheerfully. How is it that you are here? Well, maybe you can help me, said Baba Yaga. I am new in this village and I'm very alone. I need a place to stay. I can cook, I can clean, and I can take care of your son for you. Oh, but I have no money to pay you, said Natasha. I don't need any money. All I need is a little place to rest my head and maybe some food. Well, then you shall indeed stay with us. Oh, I kiss your eyes and I hold you in my heart, said Baba Yaga. And stay she did. There she is. See, they don't have a washing machine in this house. They just have a wash bucket. It's a very old-fashioned house. Oh, how happy she was. When Natasha went to work in the morning, she and Victor cleaned the little house. When all of the tasks were done, Baba Yaga took Victor to the edge of the woods, and this was her favorite part of the day. So this little boy was never, never born. He got to play with the cats and the string. She would pull Victor into her lap, and as she cradled him there, she told him wondrous tales and legends of the forest. She sang him songs he had never heard before. Then they would just sit together and daydream without any words at all. As time passed, 
they grew to love each other. Baba Yaga took such pride in Victor's life, almost as much as a real grandmother would, and she was loved in return. She had earned her place with all the other grandmothers under the shade tree in, a, in the village square, and she was quite happy and content with her new life. Then one day, as the babushkas gathered, they started telling stories to their children. One of them spoke of Ivan Sverevich, the great wolf and the firebird, and another told the tale of sweet Alyushka and brother Ba Ivanushka, and they all laughed. Then one of them rose from her seat with her eyes narrowed and her voice hissed as she told the legend of Baba Yaga. She eats babies the woman said as they stared in wide-eyed amazement. She flies through the air on an old stump and casts spells. She comes out of the forest and she takes children in the dead of the night. She is ugly. She is a hag. She is evil and hateful, said another. And if you don't behave, she'll come and get you. Victor hugged his Baba Yaga very close. That night when she put Victor to bed, he cried himself to sleep. Baba Yaga tried to calm him, but her own heart was heavy. There was only one thing to do. She would have to go back to her home in the forest before Victor learned who she really was. She left a note for Victor and his mother saying, I kiss your eyes and I hold you in my heart, my beloved ones. I shall never forget your kindness. Love, your babushka. And she left never to return. For a very long time, Victor went to the edge of the forest every day. It helped him remember his babushka, who he missed so. Then one day, as he sat, he saw yellow eyes peering at him from the deep black of the forest. When he could make out the shapes that went with his eyes, he saw it was a pack of wolves. They looked pretty hungry. He screamed for help, but he was surrounded by them. The villagers came running, but the wolves snapped at them and snarled when the villagers tried to get close. Oh, please, said his mother, someone help my baby. At that very moment, the trees parted and out of the forest crashed a fearsome figure, snarling and gnashing its teeth at the wolves. <gasps> Everyone said, it's the Baba Yaga. Oh my goodness. The creature eyed them menacingly as it sprang like a cat at the savage wolves, and the wolves scattered and ran. Then the creature moved closer to the child who was screaming in fright with gnarled hands. The Baba Yaga reached for the boy, and the mother screamed. The voice from the crowd said, The Baba Yaga is going to eat him! Do you really? And as the creature snatched the child from the ground, the villagers gasped in horror. With a loud smack, it kissed the child. And then with eyes brimming with tears, the weathered arms held the boy close and rocked him so gently. She didn't look the same, but Victor knew exactly who that hug was from. Babushka! Victor cried, and he hugged her back. See her face with her little ears? She looks very different. There was a great celebration in that village that night for a very unusual babushka. There were flowers given, bread and salt offered, songs sung, and dances were danced. One of the babushkas moved close to her and took the Baba Yaga's hands and called out, Those who judge one another on what they hear or see and not what they know in their hearts are fools indeed. Hear, hear, said the mayor as everyone cheered. Baba Yaga smiled and accepted with grace their tributes. For the rest of her days, she kissed many eyes and held scores of hearts in her good keeping. She was spoken of in the highest regard, and she was well-loved. From that time on, she was known as Babushka Baba Yaga. Thanks so much.
Thank you, Miss Angela. What a wonderful story time. So it is a gorgeous day outside and we want all the children to be able to enjoy the sunshine. But do you recommend they still practice social distancing? Oh yeah, I've got my mask ready to go. I think it's really important that we take care of one another. That's Just right. like Babushka, Baba Yaga took care of Victor. Um, we stay six feet apart. Uh, we wash our hands and wash our hands and wash our hands uh, whenever we do anything. And uh, that way we can, we can hold all of each other in our hearts and take care of each other. Oh, Miss Angela, thank you so much. Um, tomorrow is Wednesday, and we have another reader coming, another person who read last week, uh, Senor um, Manuel. Oh. And uh, Manuel Aliman, and he's from Evanston, and he's actually written a number of children's books. Oh, that's cool. And uh, so it'll be fun tomorrow to hear from him. And please pass on our love to your family, and may you all be safe. Yes. Have a good day, everybody.